You're good? Oh, yes. Welcome. Welcome to Unity on the North Shore with our Sunday service. If you're joining virtually on Zoom or watching later in this on social media, we're glad you are here. My name is Ray Hatland, and I will be your worship assistant today. Martin Taylor it will be our prayer chaplain. And I, uh, Priscilla is going to be our chaplain for the day. Okay, thank you. Uh, Reverend Kurt will give the lesson and the meditation. Our musicians are Cal Youngerson and Danny Bauer. So let's have an opening, our prayer for the opening. <clears throat> Holy Presence, we know in God we can never be separate from love, from truth, from infinite intelligence, and the source of all of our good. We gather here in this sacred time to open our hearts and minds to the one power and one presence. We gratefully receive the energies of divine light and love pouring in and through us. And we affirm we are here this morning for a divine purpose. We trust that the purpose is now being fulfilled. For we know we are now in the divine presence of pure being, immersed in the holiness of the Holy Spirit and love, life, and wisdom, and so it is. Amen. We now have an opening song by Cal and uh, I think we all need a little bit of sunshine on the Sunday morning. Grab your coat and get your hat. Leave your worries on the doorstep. Just direct your feet to the sunny side of the street. Can't you hear a Peter Pan and that happy tune in your step? Life can be so sweet on the sunny side of the street. I used to walk in the shade with those blues on parade. But I'm not afraid this rover crossed over. If I never had a set, I'd be rich as Rockefeller with gold dust at my feet on the sunny side of the street. Babe of 
the street can't you hear a pitter pad and that happy tune in your step life can be so sweet on the sunny side of the street i used to walk in the shade with those blues on parade but i'm not afraid this rover is over if I never had a cent. I'd be rich as Rockefeller with gold dust at my feet on the sunny, on the sunny, on the sunny Saturday night of the street. Uh, anyway, welcome again. Unity is positive, is a positive, practical approach for spiritual living based on the teachings of Jesus and the power of prayer. We believe truth and beauty are in every spiritual tradition, and we honor the many paths to the one God. Wherever you are on your journey of faith, you are always welcome here. Our purpose is to create a safe place, space, where people are empowered to take risks and live their deepest truth. If this is your first Sunday, we extend a loving welcome to you. Many of us were surprised to learn there was a spiritual community that thought and believed many of the same things we did. We felt like we were coming home. We hope your experience this morning is powerful and that you'll return. Now please rise and we're going to have a group song. I believe is named Blessings and Cal. God's blessings are all around me. All is good if only I see. I have everything I blessings are all around me thank you God thank you God for everything thank you joy with which we sing God's love God's 
love's all around me all is good if only i see i have everything i need god's love is all around me thank you god thank you joy with which we see. Florence, your chaplain for this day. I am available for prayers after church in the back of the sanctuary. And if you are online, feel free to put your prayers in the um, box in the back, in the bowl in the back. I am here to read the daily word. And while, as I read this, let my words be your words. Today's theme is light. The light of God illuminates me. Divine illumination is the light that brightens my way when I feel life's darkness descend around me. This light of spiritual understanding helps me express an energy that aligns me with the peace and the power of God. With it, I can bring coherence and order to scattered and disordered circumstances. I bring the light of God to whatever may be casting a shadow in my life. I use my indwelling wisdom to discern the way forward. When I receive a nudge of intuition or a flash of insight, I move forward in complete trust. We all get that, isn't that exciting? I shine the light of truth and understanding when I rely upon my divine wisdom. I don't fear the darkness. I bring the light. And the passage, this is from 1 John chapter 1, verse 5. This is the message we have heard from. We have heard from him and proclaim to you that God is light and in him there is no darkness, no darkness at all. And now, let us just take a moment to sit back and breathe deeply. <coughs> breathe into this message as we feel our oneness. And as we come out of this silence, let us affirm God's presence and guidance in every person, in every living human being and creature. Thank you, God, as we bless them as well. Amen.
Imagine what you want and get out of the way. Remember, energy follows thought. So be careful what you say. Be careful what you ask for. Make sure it's really what you want. Because your mind is made for thinking. And energy follows thought. Your mind is in control, even when you do not know. And if you let it idle, ain't no telling where it will go. Wherever you are sleeping and your dreams take you away, go on with your dreaming and listen to what they say. And if you hear spirits talking, their wisdom can't be bought. Apply it to your thinking, and energy follows thought. mind is in control even when you do not know and if you let it idle there's no telling where it will go imagine what you want then get out of the way remember energy follows thought remember energy follows thought Remember, energy follows thought. So think wisely today. Doesn't that sound familiar? Energy follows thought. Doesn't that sound like a unity song? Do you know who wrote that? Willie Nelson. Isn't that wild in the last year? And Cal and Denny, I love your arrangement of that. You did a beautiful job. Thank you so much. Whew. So it seemed like a really good idea that we sort of revisit that spiritual principle that thoughts held in mind produce after their kind, especially here at the beginning of the year. I know many of you were with us for last week's burning bowl ceremony when we're very deliberate about looking over the past and releasing what we don't want to carry forward, and we're very intentional about what we want to create as we move forward. Uh, and so I thought um, to sort of revisit the power of our thoughts to help shape our experience, to help manifest those goals and desires and intentions that we're setting would be really helpful. Um, I've been listening a lot to this amazing podcast called 10% Happier. It's by Dan Harris, who I think is an ABC correspondent, maybe CBS, I don't remember. Anyway, amazing um, kind of um, meta, it's mostly he talks to brilliant meditation teachers on this regular podcasts. Uh, and they have um, various classes that are available. It's not a cheap, it's not an inexpensive app to buy, but every once in a while they do a meditation challenge that's free for anybody. So um, I'm, I was gonna do this at the end of my talk, I don't know how I got here now, but what I'm gonna do is invite you into that experience. Um, if you would like to participate in this 10% happier meditation challenge in the next week, if you'll text me at 214-403-5933. Um, Jan, if you could put that in the chat stream for the folks online so they'd have it. 214-403-5933. Or you can email me at revkurtunityns at gmail.com. Revkurtunityns, like North Shore, at gmail.com. Um, I will send you an invitation. The app allows me to do that. I'll send you a personal invitation. So then we're all kind of tracking, right? We're all together. And, and the challenge is that over the next 10 days that you would be meditating each and every day. 
and they have videos. It's based on this wonderful sort of class that they developed with the Dalai Lama about the Dalai Lama's secret for happiness. So there'll be a little video you can watch, and then you can re reflect on it and do your meditation, and then it all gets recorded, and if we're connected by, you know, you emailing me or texting me, then we can kind of um, hold each other accountable. That sounds very authoritative. We can kind of encourage each other <laughs> as we move through this 10-day this challenge together. I think it'll be a lot of fun. And then at the end, if there are some folks, maybe we can, we can figure out a way that we can get together and have an in-person maybe celebration um, and talk about maybe what we've learned through this 10% happier. Is that clear? 10% happier is the app. Email me or text me and I'll send you out an invitation so we can kind of be as a group, we can move through that together and really look to deepen the awareness of how our thinking is shaping our behaving and is shaping um, our power to manifest the desires that we have expressed for this coming year. Uh, in the particular class, this is separate from the, the Dalai Lama thing, but in, on the 10% Happier app, the class that I've sort of shaped this next series around is really about creating healthy habits. And they're talking about healthy habits of thought and mind. So it's a really great sort of synergy between that. Uh, and, and what I want to talk about this morning is really the way in which um, as, as Cal was just singing in that song, that the mind is always working. Whether we know it or not, our thoughts have creative power. There's a vibrational quality that happens that actually is, is um, a, a creative force. And it doesn't matter if those thoughts are positive and, and aligned with what we want, or if they're negative and contrary to what we want. If we're thinking them, um, the vibrational quality of the energy that we're putting out matches that. So it behooves us to be really clear about when the mind is sort of off and running on its own and when it's sort of on purpose and aligned with our deepest desires. So I want to talk a little bit about how that happens. And it begins really with um, reviewing the why behind the intentions that we're setting, right? For the most part, the kinds of intentions that we're setting, and they're much like the kinds of prayer requests that we often have, are, you know, I want to, this, this year I want to I wanna exercise more. I want to be more healthy. I want to get in shape, um, or I want a new job. I want to I want to be have greater income coming into my life. Or we've got some kind of specific, what I would almost describe as strategies that we're wanting to manifest in the next year. And the coaching from the 10% Happier app that they're giving is that okay, that's great. You know, those are wonderful kind of goals and intentions to hold. But if we're really going to get out of the automated sort of reactionary part of the mind that is just sort of on autopilot. It means that we have to go a little bit deeper than, than most of us tend to operate on, right? Most of us tend to operate on a level that is fairly um, reactive, I would say. You know, I think it's called in, in uh, brain theory stuff, there's the amygdala, right? That's the reptile brain. That's the monkey mind. And for most of us, most of the time, we're kind of running on autopilot. There's stuff that we got to do and get done, and, and, and that's fine. But it also means that we're... we're we're moving from a space that is more reactive and instinctual than it is thoughtful and insightful. If we want to get to the thoughtful, insightful part where we're really going to tap into the kinds of thinking and energy that are going to align with our deeper desires, then we need to sort of be aware when we're misapplying um, those two parts of our brain, right? Um, and that requires that we be really paying attention. Um, the example that I like is there was a woman that was being interviewed who wanted to eat healthier, right? That was sort of her objective. Um, and we could apply that in, at any level of wanting greater health and awareness, right? So there's that. She wants to be eating healthier. So what she's noticing is that one day she's toward the end of day at work. She's got a meeting coming up that uh, has been delayed a little bit. And she notices that she has this real instinctual kind of desire to grab a grab a pack of, um, you know, a snack chip things. I was going to have a pack of Fritos here to demonstrate. I forgot to bring them up, right? To rip that open and you just sort of, you're just out of, out of habit, right? That's monkey mind. There's no thoughtful kind of, um, and what she's, as she became more aware of it, you know, as we tap into, okay, that's the craving. For me, it's the hot tamales, you know, those little cinnamon candies. I got them in the cupboard. When I tap into that craving, if I can, if I can just put a little bit of a pause in there and recognize that, that salivating in my mouth isn't necessarily going to dictate my next move. Recognize that, okay, is that really aligned with what I want right now? And probably not. What it, what it is, it's, it's a way to sort of alleviate the anxiety or the pain of the moment. 
for me, I was usually um, procrastinating on something I didn't want to get to. You know, I'd be at the computer at my desk, and now that we're home, the cupboards are very handy, and I'd get up and go get a hot, uh, hot, hot tamales. But if I can put in just a moment of awareness and realize that, oh, hot tamales, if I go have that hot tamale, the next thing that's going to happen is I'm going to kind of beat myself up for having done it. That's really stupid. That is not what I want to be doing. Why am I acting it that way? That's kind of where my mind goes, right? And then it starts. And then it, what, and this is what the app sort of describes is typically it goes from that kind of regret or feeling a little bit of shame to like, all right, now I'm going to double down on just the sheer power of will. And so I am going to like control every action. And, and it's almost like there's a drill sergeant in my head making sure that I'm not going to do that thing again. And invariably... What happens is that the next time that we're tired or hungry or lonely or anxious, the drill sergeant just loses all authority. And instead, it's just like, oh, what a loser I am, and I'm probably going to die alone under a bridge. You know, it goes, we, we tend to be down that trajectory. That's the energetic vibration that we follow if we're listening to monkey mind. Put in that pause and remind myself that, okay, there's a deeper purpose, but we, have I really identified that? Maybe my deeper purpose isn't about eating healthier, I mean, that's a great objective, but the deepest purpose is that, you know, I really want to be at my best. I want to be at peak performance levels when I'm working. I want to make sure that I'm functioning and operating in and, and, and sort of a healthy body that can sustain really high-level performance. I want to be present for my life, right? So the deeper desire is not necessarily about not eating hot tamales. The deeper desire is wanting to really be moving through life at a high level of of, of participation and a high level of productivity and feeling on purpose and fe- right the deeper purpose is what I can insert in that pause when the craving arises. Wow, okay, I want that hot tamale. That would give me a great sense of instant satisfaction, but is that really going to move me toward my deeper goal of like being this incredibly whole and healthy and vibrant person that has the energy to do the stuff that I really feel called to do? You see what I mean by deeper purpose? So it's really important that as we look at the goals that we're setting, that we dive a little bit more deeply into the, into the why of it. What's the deepest why that we're bringing to this desire that we're holding? And use that why to propel us into that deeper level of awareness that's not so much about, you know, quelling the anxiety or instant gratification, but is about, oh, there is a deeper purpose to my life, and I really want to be present. Um, Dan Harris describes the same kind of thing in, for one of his, uh, and, and his purpose, I love this, was uh, as he was, he was working with a coach, and by the way, I wanted to slip that in too. So there's the drill sergeant, you know, that part of the brain, or the other side of it is sort of the coach or the Christ mind part. That's what we're aiming for as much as possible, to be living from or listening to the voice of that inner coach that's within us, right? So for Harris, what he was coached into is, and it was the same kind of thing around a snack, snacking habit or something, and the same kind of thing was he realized that, okay, well, one of his motivating factors is as he walked by the mirror, he got a glimpse of like his belly and uh, the sags in his cheeks, and he, so it was like a very outer motivated thing. He wanted to look better, but his coach sort of guided into something, and what he recognizes that Every time he walks by the mirror and makes that kind of a judgment, like, that energy goes with him. So five minutes later, even if he kind of dismisses it and moves on, oh, five five minutes later, when his son is right in front of him and he wants to be present for his son, in the back of his mind, he's still got this sort of shame tape playing. So if we can move into that higher vibrational stuff and recognize that, okay, what we really want is to be present to the loved ones, to be in a position, in a, in a state of mind that we can nurture greater relationship and connection rather than be sort of stuck down in the darkness of our own, um, um, uh, what do I, monkey mind brain, right? We want, we want the coach. We want the Christ mind. We want the whatever, inner guru, whatever, however you interpret that. But that, that's the energy that we want to cultivate so that we're able to manifest the deepest stuff of our dreams, yeah? Um, so I want to... I want to, this is actually going to be kind of the commercial segment of my talk this morning. Um, I want to invite you into, because we have four really cool, I've already told you about the meditation challenge, right? So that's one of the four. Um, I'm going to describe three others that we have going on here at Uriana Shore, three other experiences that we're offering. 
And what I would encourage you to do is sign up for at least one of them. Participate in at least one of those as part of your moving into sort of a space of operating from that Christ mind. Um, make it a part of a deeper practice. So the meditation challenge is the first one I want you to consider. Um, the next one is a workshop that's being offered for free, so you can't use, you can't use cost as an excuse, but um, um, Ann Baker, who is a member of our congregation, is an amazing uh, coach. She wouldn't call herself that. She's an intuitive kind of counselor, intuitive healer. She also has a long history and background in Western medicine as a nurse. And she's done a whole lot of study of new energetic, and she brings all that together in sort of this beautiful um, awareness that she uses in her teaching. So she's offering a workshop for free that's all about sort of aligning yourselves with that deeper intention and wholeness. It's an hour and a half workshop. Um, Ray will tell you about it in a minute, you'll get the dates and how you register and everything. But I would just really invite you to consider participating in Anne's free workshop for getting some good, solid grounding under the, your own intention setting. It's called something about set your compass. Um, so look for that. It'll be on the website. Ray will tell you some more details. The next one that I wanted to talk about um, is Jeff Barry, who is our ministerial intern here. Is going to be, one of the things that people have said they really miss and that we've seen evident over the holidays on when we've had a couple of occasions where people could gather in person and share a meal is that we really value that and, and we're missing that a lot. We haven't had much of that in the last couple of years even. So Jeff is doing a workshop. He's calling it Spiritual Soup and going to explore um, tools and practices that we can use to make sure that in this sort of over this wintering time that there's a level of comfort that happens. And he's got a recipe he's going to bring you, be making soup, and, and it'll just be a wonderful time to connect and share with your Unity family here. That'll be an in-person thing, and again, Ray will give you details. And then the third piece that I really want to, or the third piece that I really want to encourage you, or actually the fourth if I started with the meditation one, and the, uh, Sherry's tracking my numbers, I know, because she's really good at that. So the fourth, the final one, is uh, um, this is called Inquiry, Query, Q-U-E-E-R-Y, Inquiry. Um, and it's a workshop that's based on getting to know the spectrum of identities and sexuality. Um, it's being facilitated by a woman named Rada Jovovich. She's a colleague of mine on the Interfaith Action Board. And she is brilliant. And since one of our values here at Unity North Shore is around diversity and being able to deepen our understanding and compassion for those unlike ourselves, Rada is brilliant at this. She's a DEI, diversity, equity, and inclusion consultant, travels all over the world doing these workshops and explaining this stuff, um, at different levels of diversity and different boxes that we go through. But um, as a gay man, I sort of figured I had a handle on the whole LGBTQIA plus stuff, you know. I'd, but what Rada has helped me realize is that there is a spectrum even there. And that even as a gay man, I still operate out of some pretty rigid boxes, right? I grew up at a time when you were boy or girl. Um, I sort of um, developed when I realized I was gay that, okay, there's gay and straight. And I went through a time where even if somebody talked about bi, like my attitude was pretty much, ah, uh, make up your mind. You're either gay or you're straight. You know, it was I was in that same binary kind of. And what Rada is really great at is sort of breaking through those boxes and helping um, me and I think those who participate recognize that there are aspects of ourselves that are all along those spectrums of identity, of sexuality, and to be able to develop a greater sense of compassion for what all that means. She's going to be doing an hour and a half workshop. This is again on Zoom. You can register online. And we're inviting the whole community through the, the Evanston Pride community as well. So I'm hoping it'll be an opportunity to connect. And what Rada is brilliant at is creating space for discussion. So you'll be able to answer even the questions you feel like, oh, no, I really shouldn't say that. I don't. She, will, she will create a space to be able to lean into that. And, and really allow us to question the stuff that is top in our minds, right? So that's four really great opportunities this month to be able to deepen our capacity um, to live from that space of openness, to live out of the, the prefrontal cortex rather than the, the monkey mind brain in the other ways, right? As we begin to sort of open ourselves to other experiences, it increases our awareness it increases our capacity to really look at what's going on in our own minds so that we can put in those really crucial pauses and shift out of reactionary thinking into causative creative thinking, yes? 
So um, I think that's it. That's my invitations. Check us out. There are really, and, and really do. I, I highly recommend that you consider signing up for at least one of those experiences outside of Sundays. I think surely there's something in there that might resonate with where your goals are going. And, and of course, you're not limited to participating in one. Um, so what I'd like to do now, as, as we sort of, sp- if we've spoken now to the really digging deeply into the why of the desires that we're holding or the intentions that we're setting and wanting to manifest. It's equally important to come from a deeper sense of who we want to show up as, right? And so as traditionally happens on the, the first Sunday in, in, uh, in January in many Unity churches is we have a special ceremony that we call the White Stone Ceremony. So hopefully you all received a little small, it looks like a tile, but that's actually stone that comes from the Holy Land. Does everyone in the sanctuary have one of those stones? If not, I'm sure Cheryl can get to you. And also you'll need a marker. If you're at home, I would highly recommend, you know, we used to do this with the kids downstairs and they would just cut out a circle that they would use for their stone in this time of sort of reflection and, and um, listening. And what we're really about doing is, well, I can go back a little bit. Um, the white stone ceremony is, I probably just stepped out of frame, didn't I? Sorry, Martin. The white stone ceremony is uh, based on um, uh, a passage from the book of Revelations. It's chapter 2, 17, and it reads like this. To everyone who conquers, I will give some of the hidden manna, and I will give a white stone, and on the white stone is written a name that no one knows but the one who receives it. So in unity, um, we've taught a couple of... I'm not going to go out of frame again. I'm going to just put my phone right there. Um, In unity, there have been a couple interpretations to that book in Revelations. Uh, And by the way, Danny and and, and Cal, if you want to come up, that would be great. Um, We're going to, yeah, we're going to, I'll do a little bit of setup, and then if you could do the song, and then I'll probably do a little description. And Danny, it'd be great if you could kind of underscore my, all of my yakking (laughs) from this point. That'd be great. Um, So in unity, there are a couple of interpretations that we've used around the white stone. The first was that in ancient times, in biblical times, when prisoners were released, They'd serve their time, they'd serve their sentence, they would be given a white stone. And that white stone would sort of be their ticket or their passage um, to assure those around them that they had paid their debt to society. They were now free of the sin or the, 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 the crimes that they had committed before, that they had, had done their service, they'd paid their debt, and they were now free to live out from a new level of, new level of understanding and being. Um, I've just learned about a, a new one recently, and this was that um, that victors in sports competitions were given white stones with their names on them, and that was their ticket into the celebrations after the games, right? I'd never heard that one before, but I've seen it referenced in a couple of places. So the unity context, or for us in this ceremony, is that as we desire to move into a deeper embodiment of our true selves, right? That there is a name that spirit may hold for us that is who we are, who we want to be as we move into the next year. What qualities do I want to embody as we move into 2023? And what I invite you into is just a, a quiet, gentle reflection, a just a thinking through and a listening for what spirit suggests, who spirit suggests you ought to embody as you move into 2023 with the background and the understanding of the intentions that you may have already set, like what identity can you bring to your spiritual evolution in the course of this next year? And it's typically a a single word. Sometimes it's a phrase. But as um, I'd like you to consider that as we move into 2023, that it is a clean slate, like the prisoner released from jail, The future is unwritten. And so I would invite you to contemplate what quality you might bring forth in 2023 as Cal and Danny set a musical tone for that contemplation. can't 
read my mind. I'm undefined. I'm just beginning. The pen's in my head, ending unplanned. Staring at the blank page before you. Open up the dirty window. Let the sun illuminate the words that you cannot find. Reaching for something in the distance, so close you can almost taste it. Release your inhibitions. Feel the rain on your skin. No one else can feel it for you. Only you can let it in. No one else, no one else can speak the words on your lips. Drench yourself in words unspoken. Live your life with arms wide open. Today is where your book begins. The rest is still unwritten. I break tradition. Sometimes my tries are outside the line. We've been conditioned to not make mistakes, but I can't live that way. Staring at the blank page before you, open up the dirty window. Let the sun illuminate the words that you cannot find. Reaching for something in the distance, so close you can almost taste it. Release your inhibition. Feel the rain on your skin. No one else can feel it for you. Only you can let it in. No one else, no one else can speak the words on your lips. Live your life with words spoken. Live your life with arms wide open. Today is where your book begins. The rest is still unwritten. Staring at the blank page before you, open up the dirty window. Let the sun illuminate the words that you cannot find. Reaching for something in the distance, so close you can almost taste it. Release your inhibitions. Feel the rain on your skin. No one else. Can feel it for you. Only you can let it in. No one else, no one else can speak the words on your lips. Live your life with words that are spoken. Live your life with arms wide open. Today is where your book begins. The rest is still unwritten. The rest is still unwritten. And so perhaps Spirit has revealed to you a new name for moving into 2023. If you haven't already, I would invite you to record that name on your white stone. Your ticket to new life moving into 2023. Your ticket to the power to manifest your dreams moving into a new year. And by the way, if you haven't got a word yet, it's okay. Spirit will reveal it in right and perfect time. You're free to take this stone with you and keep it handy so when it is revealed, you can bring that into your experience. 
If you have written a word, if it has been revealed, who you are to show up as 2023, I invite you to hold the stone in your hand and just um, maybe gaze at the word. And then I invite you to just close your eyes and move into a felt experience of what that word evokes in you. Hopefully it's a sense of your own greatness, your own capacity to create the life of your dreams, the quality of your own divinity. May it be brought forth as you embody this name given to you this day. Thank you, thank you, thank you, God, for the awareness that we write what comes next. So it is, and so we let it be. Amen. Staring at the blank page before you, Open up the dirty window, let the sun illuminate the words that you can now find. Reach in for something in the distance, so close you can taste it. Release your inhibitions, feel the rain on your skin. No one else can feel it for you, only you can let it in. No one else, no one else can speak the words on your lips. Live your life with words spoken. Live your life with arms wide open. Today is where your book begins. No one else, no one else can speak the words on your lips live your life with words that are spoken live your life with arms wide open today is where your book begins the rest is still unwritten the rest is still unwritten Thanks, Danny, Cal. You are amazing. So this is the time in our service that we've come to call our money moment. Um, I'm going to change it around a little bit, switch it up, and call it our um, immersion in the flow of prosperity. And we know that that immersion doesn't just involve money, that it's much broader. And so I want to acknowledge today the ways in which um, we as um, a spiritual center, Unity on the North Shore, have been able to participate and bless the community outside the walls. Um, many of you know that last year the board had decided that we really wanted to um, be very intentional about our tithing, that we're tithing to an organization that we're not only tithing money to, but that there are experiences with which we can volunteer and that there's this kind of synergy that we can cooperate and, and create a more, um, a, a more kind of productive relationship between the two. And so the organization we chose to partner with in 2022 was Interfaith Action of Evanston. Um, and I just want to let you know that we have, um, that Joyce Davidson, who had agreed to be our delegate last year, has agreed to serve another term. So she'll be our delegate for 2023. And we've decided that we're going to continue our affiliation with Interfaith Action of Evanston. So I'd like to invite Joyce to come up and she's going to talk a little bit about some of the opportunities that, um, that are arising at Interfaith Action. First of all, thank you, Joyce, for being our delegate this last year and for agreeing to continue. It's just it's a beautiful way that we share. Good morning, everyone. Um, Make sure you're here. Yes. And um, as Reverend said, so my being a delegate again is part of my service, which is what I really have a passion for. And so I have two announcements today of, uh, for Interfaith Action. The first is the Walk for Warmth that's happening on Dr. Martin Luther King Day. And there have been announcements in the newsletter, but uh, I just want to give a few things. So this is the fourth year for the Walk for Warmth on January 16th. 
is at 11 o'clock and it meets at the First United Methodist Church on Church in Hanman. And the walk is approximately two miles and you walk past the faith communities that have the emergency overnight shelter. And I do want our congregation to know that the entire amount last year that we gave to IAE totally went to the emergency overnight shelter for nothing else because that is their greatest need. And they can expand this year because uh, the city let them have more uh, patrons because of COVID so they can add a few more each night. And I just want to say, if you can't walk, please consider a donation. I remember what my mom taught me, pennies turns into dollars. So any amount you give, you can go to www.interfaithactionofevanston.org and find out information for the uh, Walk for Warm. So if you can't walk, you can still donate. Thank you. The second opportunity is IAE started at the end of October breakfast uh, bags because on the weekends our unhoused clients had no food on the weekends because all of the soup kitchens were Monday through Friday. So they started breakfast bags and they got Reba Place to at least be the point where uh, faith communities could drop off. So how it works is we have signed up, I signed up our church for January the 20th. And so we're going to fill, they only want you to do 20 bags for breakfast items, such as muffins, individual yogurts, a bottle of water, a juice box, bananas or oranges, no apples, cause some people don't have dental care. So you have to remember that. Uh, but uh, we will pack 20 bags here and I will take them over to Reba Place for them for Saturday morning. If you want more information and those items, we would appreciate if you would just donate 20 you can give me a call or email. Jan is putting the information in the chat box, but you can email me at jd1810 at comcast.net, and my phone number is 847-269-1810. So you can call and ask what items we need, and again, it's only 20. So thank you so much for this opportunity to serve IAE. It's a wonderful organization. And I really remember them when it was minus zero, all those people who did not have shelter or warmth. Thank you so much. Thank you, Joyce, for keeping us connected to the greater community. Um, I also wanted to just very briefly um, We've completed our fourth quarter tithes, and I wanted to make sure that we have an opportunity to bless those before they go out. Um, Interfaith Action, we're, we're, we're sending them a check for $2,000 for the overnight shelter, as Joyce just said, as part of our quarter, last quarter tithe. Um, Unity Worldwide Ministries, which is sort of the umbrella organization for all Unity churches, we're sending $1,800. Unity World Headquarters, um, that's where Silent Unity is housed and they do all the publishing. We're sending them $375. And then we're also sending an additional $600. So you may remember that a few weeks ago, Cheryl Judis and I drove back to Unity Village so that we could scatter some of Hecky's ashes and uh, another member who passed away, Nancy Good. Her ashes had been in my office for years and we wanted to make sure that we were uh, just being respectful as we looked to selling this property. And so those ashes were scattered in the Rose Garden of Unity Village. And they didn't ask for any donations, but we decided that what we would do in lieu of a donation to Unity World Headquarters would be to buy pavers to commemorate um, all those we know of that had ashes interred here on the property. So we acknowledge Nancy Good and Hecky Powell, of course, and Therese Clemmings. Many of you remember that she was very active and involved with Interfaith Action in their soup kitchens when she was alive. 
and then William and Mabel Wingart. So they will all have bricks um, that will be positioned around the fountain at Erie Village to, to memorialize them, and that's been part of our tithing for the last quarter. And then we, the last um, of our tithe recipients for the fourth quarter was uh, Great Lakes Unity Region. They've been very supportive of our board this past year in terms of um, a resource for finding out what other churches are doing and a couple of trainings that have happened. So all told, we are, we are immersing ourselves in the flow of good and prosperity by giving back to where we receive our spiritual good as a spiritual community. And we know that that flow extends all the way from all of you who have given to support your ministry, and we're continuing it out to these five tithe recipients. So, uh, and Ray, I'm gonna, let's go ahead and skip the usual offering piece. We don't need to, if you're online, um, there's always a giving link on the website you can give. The address is 3434 Central Street, Evanston, 60201, um, or you can use the app to give. If you're here in the sanctuary, there's a bowl in the back where we receive our, um, our tithes and offerings on Sundays if you're writing checks. So with that said, what I would love to do is um, hold up your hands and all of the beautiful energy we've been cultivating around really coming out of our Christ mind. Let's just unfold these wonderful funds that we're sending out to do greater good in the world, knowing that they're deeply connected to all that we have received. Together, divine love as me blesses and multiplies all that I am, all that I have, all that I give, and all that I have received. Right. And I think Ray has um, got just some slides with some more information about how to, uh, yeah, let's go ahead and skip. I know we're running a little bit over, okay. so um, Ray, if you could just do the final, um, cool. Well, let's see what's left here. <laughs> anyway, also, by the way, please consider that you can do a, a, a tithe at the app tithely, uh, tithe, tithe dot ly app, okay? And you can do that on a, have an automatic, uh, payment at your bank that's no uh, fee. So, you know, we, we like to pray here in, at Unity, so I think we're going to have our closing prayer. How, uh, uh, wait, wait a second. Wait, 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 wait. Got to turn the page. All right. Thank you, Cal. And Gary, you know, it's, 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 whatever you got here. So, uh, <clears throat> so now, I guess we're going to go through what, what he's already given you. You get to hear it twice, a little more detail. Uh, set your compass intentions online workshop with Ann Baker. It's free and it's powerful and it's 90 minutes. Uh, it's a, uh, in, in a workshop setting, an authentic intention to align your mind, body, and heart to that creative energy within all of us. That's one. Register online. That's the big one. Oh. Sure they know how to get to it. Register online. Where, uh, at Unity? Next. It's not on here, so... Where do, where do you register? www.unityns.org. Okay. www.unity.ns.org. Second, Spiritual Soup Workshop, Saturday, January 21 at 10 a.m. in person. Jeff Berry facilitates this workshop on how awareness can be channeled into a warm and strengthening energy for the winter. It will include making a soup and sharing a simple recipe that anyone can make. Uh, that sounds kind of nice, okay. And now we have the inquiry 
Is that up there? Oh yeah, there she is. The gender and orientation spectrums. Thursday, January 26th at 7 p.m. Online with Rada Yobovich. Did I okay? Okay. A diversity and inclusion expert who Reverend Kurt knows and is friends with. Evanston Pride will facilitate a highly interactive session on gender and, or, and orientation. Participants will learn about the origin of pride, current language, describing LGBTQIA+. That's just the beginning. Uh, identities. <clears throat> and invited into new curiosity about their own locations on their those identif identity spectrums. You will also learn what a lie ship across the alphabet looks like. <laughs> I have no idea exactly what that is. But anyway, it sounds like you might learn something that uh, is very confusing to me. So, so that's it. Okay. <clears throat> And now Cal and Danny will lead the peace song and, and uh, we'll have our closing prayer with Priscilla. Thank you. The words are on the screen. The light of God surrounds us. I am light. The love of God enfolds us. I am love. The power of God protects us. I am power. The presence of God watches over us. I am presence. Wherever we are, God is. I am divine. Have a lovely day, everyone. Thank you for coming. <laughs>